In this video, we're going to start to discuss logical shifts as well as logical rotations. And these two instructions are really useful in the sense that they allow us to manipulate numbers at a bit level by way of shifting everything to the left or to the right. And this has a lot of unique and interesting properties that are actually really useful to take advantage of. So what I'm going to do in this video is it's easier to look at this as a bit level operation rather than with hex or decimal. So I'm going to demonstrate to you what it looks like from a binary perspective. And then in the next video, we'll actually take a look at some examples with instructions in ARM. So this is just going to get you that basic foundation of what is a shift? What is a rotation? What does it look like? What does it represent? Why do we use it? So that's going to be the main goal here. So we'll start off with shifts. With shifts, there's two different types of shifts that we see. There's a logical shift to the left and a logical shift to the right. And these two differ based on what direction the bits in the binary number are shifting in. So to give you a basic example, let's just pick a binary number. Let's say 1010. Zero, zero. This is 10 in decimal. So when we look at this number, when we're doing a logical shift to the left, what that means is that I'm going to move everything one position to the left of where it started. So this zero moves over here where this one used to be. This one moves over here where this zero used to be. The zero moves to the one. And remember, since there's eight bits, I didn't write them in here, but there's you know eight bits of space here available. The one is going to move over here to this empty bit that didn't used to have anything in it. Now, the actual result of this is the following. We get one, zero, one, zero, and then there's an extra zero at the end. Now, when we take a look at this binary number, we actually see a really interesting property come up. And that's the fact that this is actually equal to 20 when you translate it to decimal. And notice that this is exactly double what we started. It's like we multiplied the value by two. And it turns out that isn't coincidental. That is true for every single instance of a logical shift to the left. It's the same as multiplying the value by two. As such, a logical shift to the left actually represents a fast way to do multiplication by two. And that's the main value of doing this logical shift. Now, there are other reasons why we might want to do it, but this is one that's very obvious and prevalent. So this is something that we could take advantage of. So this would be the idea of your logical shift to the left. Now, when we take a look at a logical shift to the right, it does something very similar, but in the opposite direction, right? So we start off with 1010, zero, zero, which again is equal to 10. If I shift everything to the right, it would mean that this one shifts over here where the zero used to be, the zero shifts over to the one, the one shifts over to the zero, and then we just get rid of the zero at the end, right? So this zero just gets, it disappears, right? So we don't really care about it anymore. Um, another thing that I'll just note here quickly, remember there's technically zeros to the left of this, right? So this zero here moves into the position where this one used to be. The result of this is the following. We get zero, one, zero, one. And what is this equal to? Well, this is equal to four and one, which makes five. Notice that this is exactly half of what we started with. So it turns out that when we shift to the right, it's the same as dividing by two. So remember that we didn't really have a way to divide numbers before. There wasn't really a division operation in ARM. This is a way that we can implement division. We can do divisions by two, which allows us to be able to actually do full division operations. So this allows us to have division. And again, there's other reasons that we might want to do shifts to the right or shifts to the left, but these are the two most obvious ones that are really valuable to know about. And just in case you're really wondering, like, why is this true? You can, you can intuitively figure out why this ends up multiplying by two, right? If you think about what shifting to the left really does is it increases the power of all of the powers of two here by one, which is the same as multiplying by two, whereas this one decreases all of them by one, which is the same as dividing by two. So there is actually an intuitive reason behind that if you want to go through and actually sort of like derive why this is true. So that gives you an intuition behind logical shifts, and hopefully it gives you a bit of an understanding of why we care about them and what they are useful for. Now, the next thing that we'll talk about is a rotation, which is ROR. And a rotation only really differs from a shift in one single way. And that is that when we talked about the shift to the right, I said, okay, this zero, we just get rid of it, right? So the rightmost thing, we just get rid of it. We don't care about it anymore. With a rotation, that doesn't happen. The rightmost thing actually loops back over to the leftmost position. 
So let me show you an example of that. Suppose that we have the following. So I'll do all eight bits this time. And suppose we have something like this. So first off, if I did a logical shift to the right, what you would end up with is you would end up with, you know, we have all the zeros here and then we have zero. Remember everything shifts over to the right one. So we would get zero, zero, one, zero. This would be a logical shift to the right in this case, right? Now, if we were to do a rotation, what we end up with instead is we end up with this. We end up with one, zero, 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 one, zero. Notice that this one moved to the front rather than just getting eliminated. So this gives you the difference between the logical shift and the rotation. Now you might ask, why would we want to use a rotation? The uses of a rotation are actually a lot more abstract than a shift. When we're dealing with rotations, we're typically using it for things like hashing. We use it for crypto. We use it for graphics. Um, it's not an entirely common operation to see. It's typically actually left in for historical reasons. And one thing that you'll notice because of this is that um, ARM doesn't actually have a rotation to the left, like an ROL. This does not exist. So we can only rotate to the right. If you want to do a rotation to the left, you can technically do it with rotation to the right. So if you want to shift n bits to the right, what you would do is you would do, sorry, if you want to shift n bits to the left, rather, what you would do is you would do a rotation to the right 32 minus n times. And you know you could sort of play around with that and see that it actually is true. What that does is it rotates over to the left-hand side rather than the right-hand side. But again, these sorts of operations, the rotations, are not very commonly used. We don't see them all that much, so they're sort of just something that I'm adding in here to say, hey, these exist. There are some applications of them in hashing and crypto and graphics. You might see them at some point, but they aren't entirely common. But this is how they work, just in case you ever do see them. So this should give you a good groundwork foundation for logical shifts and logical rotations. In the next video, we're going to actually go through and see how we can implement these things in our ARM assembly emulator.